Hey, a quick word of warning. There's some gross stuff in this, some real gross stuff. So if you're very sensitive or delicate, you can skip this one. I won't mind. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, kudote. Let's say you're a young man, a young, hairy, beastly foreigner, and the lady that you are courting has invited you to her house, finally invited you for dinner. Big step. You're going to meet her parents for the first time. So you're sitting around the little kitchen table, elbow to elbow, doing your best to keep up, and you wish you hadn't worn a suit because it's July and the sweat is pouring off you. These people don't have air conditioning, or they don't believe in using it, or they're just trying out some techniques of police interrogation. But things are going pretty well, well enough, and suddenly a mukade drops on your head. The mukade is the giant Japanese centipede. He has enough venom to kill a baby. And this is one of his preferred methods of attack, to drop from the ceiling onto your head, the other being hiding in your shoe. Somehow you don't know how, you keep your composure. You brush it off onto the floor, and then you politely ask your future mother-in-law to hand you a tissue. You whap the thing with a slipper. Whap, 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 whap. Maybe a little, maybe a little overkill. And then you wrap the thing up. And congratulations, you have passed this test of manhood. You are a man. Hairy and beastly, maybe, but a man. Now, no one no one can see it, but you are a little shaken inside, a little shaken loose. You ask if you might please use the toilet, the toilet, the toilet. Oh, yes, of course, down the hall, first door on your left. Now, this is an older house, and you just hope. Oh, you are hoping, hoping, hoping. You hope, hope, hope it is not and it is. Welcome to the traditional Japanese toilet. These used to be standard when I first came here. Uh, thankfully, they are becoming increasingly rare. The modern Japanese toilet is sine par, hitoshi kunaku, without equal. Here is your control panel with all of your basic functions. Mine at home comes with a, a big old remote control so I can operate the toilet from anywhere in the house. Now the traditional Japanese toilet, it used to be even more traditional, a shallow hole in the ground. Of course you would have to scoop this out all the time. I had a girlfriend whose family had not progressed much beyond this. They had a deep hole in the ground which the honey wagon would come and pump out once or twice a year. Now, a hole through a raised floor was a great advance, as was the hole in the wall. Yes, the Japanese did know of the guard robe. These are some European guard robes. They were sometimes enclosed. Uh, I believe Hamlet stuffed Polonius's body down one of these. But more often they were open. And every time you went, you were doing your patriotic duty making your castle that much less attractive to attackers and your moat that much more pestilential. There is a house, believe it or not, on my street with a functional guard robe that dumps into the river. 
Now, I'm glad to say it is boarded up. They no longer use it, which is good because they are upstream. But it is still there. I pass by it every morning. It's a happy reminder of simpler times. But typically, the hole was in the floor. Now, underneath, you might have a bucket on a little rolling trolley. And you might sell your produce to the night soil man. You probably have a contract with him. Oh, there he goes now. Now, alternatively, this room might be built over a slope leading down to the river, or it might be right over the river. So something like this was standard. Now you lift off the cover or slide the cover down. You hoist your kimono, you straddle, and if there are handlebars, you hold on. Now when you are finished, please wipe with the supplied wiping stick and simply replace the cover. Now, of course, your only limitation was innovation, so great minds came up with other arrangements. You had your straddle a diversion of the river toilet and your ultra-green, ultra-reuse, ultra-recycle toilet. All of these, of course, assume that you are a person of some means. Regular peasants like myself just manured the field, if you had a field. There were also designated relief streets. If you are squeamish, put your hands over your ears now. These, uh, these onlookers are starvation victims. They're famine victims. They're standing around, ready to pick out undigested bits of corn or seeds or greens or, or, or whatever they can find. Now, why are we talking about this? Because it is necessary to visualize the story of Kurote. Kurote, black hand. Here's a five-fingered black hand on this two-meter-tall, hairy biped with human-like dentition. You see, without Without understanding of historical toiletry, young Japanese misconstrue this story. They misimagine it. They, they come up with something like this, or, or this, or this, because they don't know their toilet heritage. Now, now you are wiser than they. Yeah, you're welcome. Ishikawa Prefecture is here. It borders Gifu on the south. The Noto Peninsula stretches way out here. This, this whole Sea of Japan coast reminds me very much of the north shores of Lake Superior and Lake Huron. It is gorgeous and not very populated. Now back in the 16th century, so that's the 1500s, on the Noto Peninsula there was a fellow by the name of Jingo Bay Kasamatsu. And he's said to have been a peasant, but he must have been a pretty well-off peasant because he had one of these newfangled hole-in-the-floor toilets. Now, Mrs. Kasamatsu went to use the toilet one day, one, one evening, and as she was squatting over the hole, a big 
black hand, a five-fingered hand covered with black hair, reached up and groped her. It groped her inappropriately. She ran and told her husband. Now Jingo Bay had a sword. He ran in and saw nothing. So very bravely he baited the creature with his own his own self. The hand came up again and Jingo Bay leapt back and cut it through. Jingo Bay and his wife saw the creature run away. They estimated its height at nine feet. Nine feet. Hairy biped with five-fingered hands, nine feet tall. Call me narrow-minded, but there are not many suspects that I can come up with. Was it a misidentified bear? Deer? Pig? Were Mr. and Mrs. Kasamatsu panicked by a, a monkey? Did they exaggerate what they saw? Well, I don't think so. They kept the hand, the gigantic hand. Others saw it. Now this story, which I believe has been added on to by, we call them, legendary accretions. But this is the basic story. And if you grant that Hibagon, the Japanese Bigfoot, is real, which it is, then this is a very credible encounter. Kurote, Kurote, what were you thinking? Were you just foraging and you got surprised by Mrs. Kasamatsu and you just innocently reached up to see what was going on? Or were you waiting down there, waiting for someone to come and use the toilet? Were you waiting in particular for Mrs. Katsumatsu? Were you just copping a feel? Or did you mean to pull her out through the hole and take her away? You see, again, we have only one side of the story. But what is sure is that Kurote paid very dearly. All right, there are many more examples of Bigfoot in Japanese history and folklore. These last few videos have just been a short survey. For this video supplement, it is enough if we have established that the Hebegon did not just drop out of the sky, out of nowhere, which would have been weird. No, no, there is a long, broad, deep, rich cultural context from which he emerged in the modern day. Next video, why a second edition became so soon an urgent priority. Hint, black hands are active today. I'm Kyle for Hibagon, Japanese Bigfoot. Thank you for watching. Thank you all for your continued interest, and I'll see you again real soon. Be careful using the toilet. You know, on a personal note, my grandmother here was almost killed in the toilet by Adolf Hitler. Yeah, Adolf Hitler sent his Luftwaffe to bomb the outhouse that she was using. Well, luckily, she had just finished up and gotten back into the, the main house when the bomb struck right on target. So, Hitler was foiled. My grandmother lived to get pregnant with my dad. 
You know, if if Hitler had been successful, my father wouldn't wouldn't have been born. I wouldn't be here. My dear children wouldn't be here. Hard to imagine. My wife would still be here. She'd probably be a an attractive spinster librarian just locking up the Bedford Falls Library right about now. When you think about it, you know, you're still here. I'm still here. Thank God. Bye-bye.